Welcome to Rebel Speak and Be Encouraged. And today I'm thinking about Paul and just a life of following God and being encouraged by the Holy Spirit, right? That as we move forward, that we are meant to constantly be in dialogue with the Spirit, the Spirit encouraging us as the world is mocking us. And um, a lot of my life, I think I, I kind of was an, an atheist in, in that I wanted a, lime, a life where kind of my faith was the frame and, and uh, happiness was the center and um, um, like God was a, a good bonus on top of a good life versus that my life's not my own and that I face the things that come however God leads me, whatever encounters God purposes for me, that I'm expectant of meeting God in those moments, so that they're joyous, that they're worthwhile, that they're not an, um, an inconvenience. Like sometimes we can look at the reality of what life is and somehow name that an inconvenience, like it shouldn't be this way. And if it wasn't this way, it would be better. And and it's, it's that's, I don't know, I, I think it's kind of like, kind of like, oh, I want, I want life to work out in a way that I'm not desperate every minute of every day for God and the miracles and the nearness and the breakthrough of God. And that's what normal should look like. And that's kind of a perverse normal. I really do. It's an empowered normal, but empowered by by luck or empowered by privilege or empowered by what? I don't know. Where actually it's the delight that every minute of my life is animated by the goodness of God. Every minute of my life is restored by the by the nearness of God, breathing meaning and purpose in unexpected places. That that's joy and that's salvation. So I'm going to read from the book of Romans today. And as Paul's writing, he wants to go to Rome very much. Um, he's about to have a massive shift. <laughs> he's He's been chased and he's made enemies, but he's going to be told, hey, you go back to Jerusalem, you're going to be bound. And he, he goes and he immediately, his enemies there, it's like they can't cope any longer. They're just all that they're so irate. They're like years irate. They're chasing him down and and, and God tells him, you're going to get to Rome. And he gets to Rome as a, a prisoner with some freedom, right? A prisoner with some freedom. We see that at the end of the book of Acts. But here he's, he's writing this church. And I just want to say this. What then shall we say in response to this? That, that God's purposes are at work with us because we're called, at work through us because we're called. What shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Is that what we'll say? Yeah. <laughs> he who did not spare his own son, that's his relationship with his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? He's given us his son. We're not without. He's given us his son. Will he not give us all things? Hmm. Who, who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? Don't listen to voices that have no authority. It is God who justifies. Not, not the powers of this world that want to give you permission for what you can and cannot do. It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Who has the power to condemn you right now? Christ Jesus who died more than that who was raised to life okay the one who died and now is raised to life is at the right hand of god and is also interceding for us the one who's already died by their condemnation and was risen back to life he's at the right hand of the father interceding for us don't listen to these false little p powers who want to um I don't know, want to exercise little a authority over your life. And they don't know anything about the world you're living in. They don't know anything about the call on your life by the God of the universe who sent his son to die for you. And that that son who was 
condemned by that little A authority and has overcome its power and now sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and for me. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Don't let anything, don't let anything have power and authority where you're somehow in a situation where you think you're separated from the love, from the love of Christ. No, here's, here's Paul, who's known so much and will know so much more, who's been truly beaten and stoned and left for dead. They thought they got the job done. Who's seen uh, churches no joy in life and freedom and then sometimes go back and want to follow the law because it makes them feel secure. <laughs> <laughs> he's like what are you talking about no he's gonna fight for that joy and he's gonna fight for that freedom in your and my life <laughs> paul <laughs> what mm, shall separate us from the love of christ the love of christ that should be freedom and and maybe even a, a joyful chaos a joy-filled chaos shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, he's going to quote a psalm here where the people in the psalm are saying, God, where are you, by the way? For we, <laughs> for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. It's like Paul saying, no, we've stepped into this place. We've stepped into this place of suffering. Mm. We've stepped into this place of suffering. And now here is Paul's response. No, in all these things, as we suffer, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We're not suffering for the sake of suffering. And we're not suffering for the sake of stoicism. We're not suffering for anything other than conquerors. Mm. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. It's in, it's in the love. It's in the presence. It's in the presence that we overcome. For I am convinced, I am convinced in all that I've seen, in all my journeys, in my kind of standing up, if you will, to the quote unquote important people in Jerusalem, um, whether that's fair or not, however you read that, I can tell you in all that I've seen, here's what I know. In all that I've seen, I am convinced that neither death nor life, ooh, neither angels nor demons. <sighs> He's got big contrasts here. Neither the present, what I know not right now, nor the future, what will be, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Whatever the chaos in your life right now, whatever circumstances are condemning you, maybe whatever circumstances are applauding you, whatever circumstances are making you feel good, whatever circumstances are making you feel bad, whether there is loss, Whether you feel despondent and purposeless, whether you feel at the height of your game and in complete control, prospering, <laughs> here's the thing, the love of God is with you. The love of God, the love of God. Your successes are not to separate you from the love of God and your losses and the world's condemnation and the world's underestimating of you. I just keep thinking the word despondency, just feeling despondent. I'm 
not sure your role, not sure your purpose, not sure your meaning, not sure what it's about. The love, the love of Jesus Christ that purchased, right? That he did, what does it mean he ascended, but that he descended? That love that's entered into all the darkness and all the shadows. It's meant to be palpably present. The love, I just want to say just Christ, I speak the love of the presence, the love of compassion that is present to you. Whether you feel strong or feeble, whether you can see or you can't, you feel short-sighted or like you've got eagle vision and you feel like you can see a long way off, you feel like there's walls coming down on you, you can't see at all. The reality of God is with you. His nearness and dearness are singing over you. That's not false. <laughs> Maybe there's something that you're like, God, I, I want my life to be about great things. And you have an idea of great things. And I want to say to you that as you sing in the presence of God and you feel that love and you feel that nearness, I'm going to say that word existential. There's an existential reality of greatness that is timeless. There's that old song about the garden and the time we share as I tarry there no other has ever known. That song's been in my mind a lot. I learned it when I was in Tennessee in, in high school. There was a neighbor and that man, his, his life was complicated, but he loved that song. And maybe I've shared it recently, I don't know. But I want to say, tarry, tarry in the presence of God till you feel that fullness of goodness that is truly near you, that's never separated far from you. Tarry in that nearness. And you can say, I, I don't have time. And I just want to say, pull over and, and take 10 minutes. <laughs> Park your car and worship. Tarry in that nearness of love that speaks volumes of your worth and purpose, speaks volumes into the good that your life is, that that word of life, of goodness that was spoken at your creation, good is established. You are established in good and good is established in you. And through the person of Jesus Christ, you can't be separated from that word of good that was spoken over your birth and life. And if the enemy is tormenting you and speaking some other word, just know that you can worship where you are right now. You can worship in the middle of any noise and any storm and know the love of God in this moment. And you're meant to live in that knowledge, not head knowledge. I say existential, experiential knowledge. You're meant to be fully vibrant alive in the knowledge of the love of God that no matter what else is being spoken, oh, your life is a wasted life. Oh, something in you, something of a diminishing word. It's a lie. It's a lie. And God wants to speak a God wants to speak a word of life into your circumstances. That's what Paul's saying here. Don't you let any other word be spoken, no matter what's going on. Don't let that other reality name you. Because Christ died, that Christ alone can speak, speak the name of love, the, the word of love, the presence of love into all the hostility. There, there might be so much hostility and the enemy has just spoken this word. Oh, if God loved you, the circumstances of your life wouldn't look like that. And Christ's like, no, I, I've walked in and I'm turning on the light and I'm speaking love and laughter. I'm speaking love and laughter in any moment, in any moment. I've purchased the land of your life and I've purchased the land of your mind. I've, I've purchased it. I've, I bought it. So I can, I can speak a different word. And, and we hear songs about that. We, we know that. But, but it's something about opening our heart in this moment, in this time. Just closing your eyes and just feeling the magnitude of God's love. The vision of God's purpose. The kindness and the presence and the okayness. It's okay beyond your, it's not okay 
in some numb filled way it's going to be okay because it has to be okay no god wants to delight your god wants to speak the reality of god that's always good always faithful always kind You are never alone. And the reality of God never disappoints. And that's what Paul, in the midst of Paul's life, is saying. And, and he's going to go on to talk about how disappointed he is, how much what he wants for the nation of Israel. It, it just, Paul is very convoluted. I can never map him out. But there's something about, in the midst of everything he's wanting, to see and know that there's a stabilizing reality of God that is in his mind and in his heart. And he's, he lives in that reality in such a precious way that it's, it's not um, a means to an end. The goodness of God is the end against which there is no law, the joy, the reality. Mm. <laughs> May the love of God be so powerfully rich in your mind and heart. May the re presence <laughs> May God be breathing God's purposes. May you feel it. May, may you feel, may you feel the reality of God in and through you and know you are loved in a way that there's peace regardless of the wind and regardless of the rain. And may your mind not partner with the wind and the rain in such a way that you don't know the love of the Father in the midst of that your life somehow says, no, this is all absence. And God says, no, I'm present. Speak presence. Seek presence. Seek presence. That, that you could be the one, like so many others throughout the history of, of, of life right, since Christ. That you can be amongst those who in the midst of despair... Knew a greater reality of the triumphant joy of the Lord as your strength. That grace, that grace be your name. That grace be your triumph. That grace be your joy. That your God be the God <laughs> who inhabits your life and puts the wind and the rain to rest. Be encouraged. <laughs>